Wallingford, in the shadow of the castle. Matilda's faction, commanded by her son Henry, proved it was still willing to fight King Stephen for the crown. But after 15 years of conflict, both sides had had enough. So they made a deal. Matilda would surrender her claim to the throne on condition that when Stephen died, her eldest living son Henry would succeed him. A year later, he was crowned King Henry II and proceeded to grow the kingdom into the mighty Angevin Empire. But once again, what the king had spent his life building, his own children were destined to destroy. King Henry II had four surviving legitimate sons, and he planned to divide up his kingdom between them. But they fought bitterly for dominance. Against the odds, Henry's youngest son, John, became king. But King John was deeply unpopular. He lost huge swathes of the Angevin Empire gained by his father, then failed to reclaim them in expensive battles. Paid for by taxing his subjects. Eventually, England's barons could take it no more. They forced John to agree to a charter that restricted his power. The Magna Carta. But he went against his word. Furious, they rebelled, inviting Prince Louis of France to invade England. In 1216, Louis sailed to Dover and set his sights on taking this, Dover Castle. Held by forces loyal to King John, it was commanded by Hubert de Burr. He described the castle as the key to England. He was right. If it fell to the French, so would the kingdom. Asked to invade by the rebel barons, Prince Louis's French army launched an assault on the castle at Dover. Opening a crack in the outer defences, the invading forces charged the castle walls. The garrison at Dover would meet the French with clenched fists and an iron will. Dover could not fall. Commander Hubert de Burr rallied his men to hold back the French and defend the castle. While the castle's garrison thwarted the first French attack and prepared for a second, a new resistance force was building in the English countryside. A skilled bowman and fierce patriot known as Willikin of the Weald began to muster a resistance to the French invasion. Determined to keep the crown in King John's hands, Willikin would rally every available archer to the cause. With his bowmen assembled, Willikin planned to ambush the French siege engines on their way to the enemy camp. Every time? He could be that 
some French reinforcements made it to their siege camp, adding more numbers to their next attack on the castle. Willikin spotted a group of English fighters engaged in battle with the enemy and rushed to their aid. Willikin's resistance force continued to grow, adding more skilled men to its ranks. Hester and Suiza, yes. You find intended, Pradine Hester. The French launched a renewed attack on the castle. But thanks to Willikin's ambush force, the enemy had been greatly weakened. With Willikin's archers weakening the siege from outside the castle, the garrison at Dover repelled the French attack. Willikin ordered his archers to resume their strikes on the French reinforcements. Stab. 
sweet side. In Hester? Willikan's archers had decimated the French reinforcements. But undeterred, the French mustered what troops they could and launched another attack on the castle. The hardy English garrison held fast, refusing to let the castle fall to the French invaders. Willikin rallied his archers to continue strikes in the coming French.
combined grit of the English garrison and Willikin's surprise attacks ensured that Dover hadn't fallen yet. Now the English prepared to repel the final French assault. The tenacity of Hubert de Burr's loyal soldiers forced Prince Louis and the rebel barons to abandon their siege at Dover. And thanks to the efforts of Willikens' fearless archers, England remained in King John's hands.